All right, so last last class Monday, I'll present the uh, derivation of the Navy Stokes equation. So we're going to derive. The Navy Stokes equation is a, is a PD system that's used to model fluid flow. So the picture you have in mind is if you have a fluid uh, that has the velocity P, so V is the velocity vector. So some notations are the uh, vectors with an underpart. So this is a velocity vector. Uh, components of this velocity vector is U, V, W. So these are the velocity components in X, Y, and Z direction. And this velocity field depends on space x, y, z, and time. So the goal is to derive a PDE that will capture the space-time evolution of this velocity field. So let me just write down some notation. So, um, components of x. So I'll use. Um, Index notation will denote the components of a vector f. Fi is denoting the ith component of the vector, and uh, so the versions of a vector f. So the index notation this becomes partial f k by partial x k. This is Einsteinian summation notation. Are you all familiar with this? Okay, so so this is expanded as partial. X one, X one, X two, X three to denote X Y Z. Notation gradient under an S unit vector. So unit vectors will be denoted by E, E cap, partial Y, partial X. This is a gradient operator. Okay, so now we'll introduce this idea of a fluid parcel. So a fluid parcel is, is an infinitesimal element of a fluid. So this is a small fluid element that has a volume differential element dB. This is a fluid parcel. And so this is this is as small as it gets where the continuum assumption is valid. So the continuum assumption is we're going to say that. You know, if you if you zoom in into the fluid, there are molecules and atoms in this, but this we're staying at a level where I can describe the velocity of the fluid element. So when I say this is the velocity of this fluid element, this velocity is denoting an average velocity over this infinitesimal small fluid element. Okay, so that's um that's a fluid parcel. So fluid parcel is the smallest integral entity in a fluid where you can you're still away from the molecular level you're, you're bigger than molecules and atoms and you can define a sufficiently average velocity temperature density and so on so we'll use rho to denote density so you, you can define these average quantities over this fluid element. this is the smallest as you can go so the fluid parcel moves with the velocity v so we're going to derive this equation for the fluid parcel and this is this works at the Now, to derive the equation, we'll start with um, we'll start with calling Leibniz theorem. If you have a uh, so suppose I'm integrating f of x t dx from e of t, so if I have an integration of this form. And if I differentiate this with respect to time, so you all remember this from both classes, right? So let me this is a to b partial f y d dx plus differentiate this upper limit e b by d t times that I put this in q of t minus 
dt by dt. So if you think about this integration, this integration so you have a, we're integrating this function with whose boundaries are moved. So this is, you can think of t as time. If t is time, this is a and b, the boundaries are moving. So you, you can differentiate this function inside and then you can put the derivative of these and you evaluate this function at the boundaries here when you do this. Okay. So you can extend this to a volume. <laughs> So if you think of the volume, P that's uh, moving in time, the corresponding extension of this becomes the dt of the moving volume. This becomes I can take this time to the sides and put it over. The equivalent of that, I have to do this on the surface. So, on the surface, the boundaries of this guy, F, and then the vector, dot velocity of the surface. Extension of Levin's to the volume that's moving. Now we'll apply this to a fluid parcel. So we think of fluid parcel, which is volume. Because fluid parcel volume will always denote by this special V. So when I apply this to a fluid parcel, the change that comes in here is that this is the velocity of the surface of this fluid element. That's the velocity of the fluid. So the definition of fluid parcel, fluid parcel is the smallest entity which moves at the fluid velocity. I apply this to a fluid parcel. Now I'm computing this over the fluid parcel volume V, which is again moving the time. It's a special V. So the previous expression that I wrote applies to any arbitrary volume of fluid that's moving. When I apply to a fluid parcel, uh, now it's over the fluid volume. So it's V. This becomes the fluid velocity V. So this, I can simplify now all of Gauss's divergence theorem. So I can apply Gauss's divergence theorem here. If I apply that, like this as so I can apply a divergence theorem here, and this would become divergence of f times v. Divergence of so the whole thing can be written as time derivative f plus divergence of f v d volume integral. So this relationship, this is popular in fluid dynamics. This is called the Reynolds transport theorem. So this applies to a fluid parcel. We can put in any particular function that holds in the fluid parcel for the temperature, density, velocity, and this relationship holds. So now we're going to put in different variables here and get appropriate conservation laws. So start with mass conservation. So for a fluid parcel, so the mass I can write as density times the volume. This is a mass, right? So this mass of the fluid parcel is, it, if I write it as a volume integral, it's rho times dv. Now the fluid parcel, mass of the fluid parcel is conserved as it moves along the field. So v by dt, division rho dv. This has to be zero. This is zero because mass is conserved. And now I'm going to apply this Reynolds transport theorem. So if I apply that, this I can write it as we're applying the first expression order. We'll apply the second one here, this one. So this is now volume integral partial rho by partial t 
plus you know is f in what i have substituted f is now row this is a substitution that i know starts with you know so this becomes partial row by partial t plus divergence of row b and by mass conservation this is zero so this is zero now this is an infinitesimal fluid irrespective of db this integral has to be zero so this this quantity here has to go to zero so that gives us an equation corresponding to mass conservation pretty equal mass conservation this is called the continuity equation so the continuity equation is this partial row by partial t plus del will be zero I will expand this divergence part. So, when I expand this, if you have questions, you are free to ask me. So, when I expand this, I can write this as divergence of B times rho plus rho times divergence. So, I can combine these and I can write this as partial rho by partial D. Is you are writing the same thing? I think that uh, the yeah. multiplication rule, the one yeah. what you just wrote, it is row time divergence. Oh, yeah. 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 So this should be E naught that. So we're combining this and this. So partial row by partial T was E naught grad row. Let's go. I will encounter this form an operator multiple times in this division. This operator partial by partial t. That's b dot grand. This operator is repeated by a shorthand t by t, and this is called the medial or effective or Convective derivative. So if you follow a fluid parcel, remember V is the velocity of the fluid parcel. So if you follow a fluid parcel and you compute the derivative as you move along with the fluid parcel, you can denote it by the short T by T T uh, is called the material effective or convective derivative. So if you use this notation here, the continuity equation becomes T plus rho. So this is mass conservation. Why? So now this is the uh, material change in the density of a fluid parcel normalized by its density. Now we define an incompressible flow. Incompressible flow is a flow whose density changes is very small. So this is very small. We can ignore this for an incompressible flow. So an incompressible flow is different from, in general, from an incompressible fluid. The water is an example of an incompressible fluid. Air is a compressible fluid. But a compressible fluid can still have an incompressible flow. So in this room, there's air circulation. That's an incompressible flow because if you compute the, this particular term for the air circulation in this room, it's very small compared to this term. So we have an incompressible flow. So for incompressible flow, this is zero, very small. So the continuity equation for incompressible flow becomes v zero. But if expanded, we by partial x. So that's continuity equation. Jim, one question. Yeah. So this material derivative, uh, can I interpret it as an effective change of momentum? No. By every certain fluid flow with the densities? Like uh, it's not a change in momentum, it's just an operator. We're defining it for the, it's it's a total derivative as you move along with the fluid parcel. So if you think of a fluid parcel, so 
as it moves, this change that happens in this fluid parcel with time and this change that happens as you move with the velocity. So the spatial changes and temporal changes are grouped into this. So this is also, this whole thing also is also called the Lagrangian derivative. These are two different um, views of fluids, Euler and Lagrangian. In Lagrangian, if you track fluid particles, you write this. So if you had a fluid particle, Track the fluid particle along its, along its path. This will be the derivative. So that's continuity equation for an incompressible flow. So now we'll get to momentum conservation. So we're going back to this Reynolds transport theorem. So there. <coughs> yeah, this is Reynolds transport theorem here. So now uh, we got continuity equation by using f equal to rho. Now I'm going to set f equal to velocity. So remember from, from high secondary school or high school, you know that momentum is mass times velocity. Right? This is momentum. So for a fluid parcel, the momentum is volume integral, density times velocity times t. So when I do this density multiplying volume, this is integrated mass, velocity. So this is momentum. And rate of change of momentum. Anyone remember what is rate of change of momentum? Yes, this is unit second law. So rate of change of momentum for the fluid parcel should equal sum of all the forces acting on the fluid parcel. So here, so I'm going to substitute in Reynolds transport theorem. I'm going to set F equals V. E. So if I set F equal to V there, I'll get this term on the left hand side there. So substitute this by dt of volume uh, equals. So we have to compute all the forces, but first let's simplify this. So this quantity equals their time derivative of rho b. Find things here. Time derivative of rho b. Uh, I'm substituting f is rho b. That's a good substitute. Time derivative of rho b plus so this time is centigrade. And now we'll apply Gauss's divergence theorem here to make this a volume integral. So here it's good to use inter index rotation. This this term here, this is rho v. It's like a tensor. N. So when I apply divergence theorem, so I mean divergence of this guy. So this is this particular term in index rotation is rho pi v k. That's the term. So when I take the divergence, it becomes partial y, partial x k. This. So this is now I have a volume integral of this v k, and I have a volume integral of this. Can I have volume integral? Right. So the left hand side, the whole left hand side becomes integration over this volume v of k. Of rho v i k. This is the left hand side view. Now we'll simplify this. Find that volume integral, the terms I have, I have time derivative of rho v equal to y pi partial by partial xk 
we are weaking. The term I have. And now I'll expand these guys. So I have a vi partial row by partial t. This row vi by partial t plus vi partial by partial xk. Putting this and this together. Okay. Row vk plus rho bk partial by partial xk of now we'll find terms so here i have vi partial rho partial t and here i have this guy so i have vi partial rho partial t plus partial by partial xk of Okay. Plus row partial t vk partial partial x k now this is now time derivative density because divergence of row v. So this by we just showed there that by mass conservation of continuity equation this is zero. So this whole thing goes to zero. Notice that here we don't need the incompressibility assumption to set this to zero. Even if it's a compressible fluid, this is still zero. So I'm just left with just this guy. So this term is density times. So now I'll return to vector form. So I'll write it as partial v partial v plus this is v dot grad. V dot grad. This and then the left hand side, I had a volume integral space. It's really volume integral of all this times this is the term I have. So we simplify the left hand side, which contains all the velocity. Now we have to sum all the forces acting on this fluid parcel. So when you think about different forces. Include we can have body forces. So body forces, gravitational force is an example of the body force. So body force is a force that acts through the entire volume of this fluid. So uh, again, you will learn at some point that you know, if you have a mass m, gravitational force is mg, the next term, right? So the gravitational force fg, this I can write as volume integral. Density times G times Z hat is a unit vector in Z direction, but because it acts in the negative direction, it acts down. I have a negative sign. So G negative Z times G. So this is a gravitational force, which is a body force. So I've been able to write the gravitational force acting on a fluid parcel in terms of volume. So this is body force. Now we can have surface forces. Surface force. Surface force, the two major one is one is pressure. And the other is um, viscous stress force. So these are the two forces that act on the surface of the body. Body force acts toward the volume, which is why we get the volume too. Surface force act only on the surface of the body. So pressure, if we think of pressure, if we have a body, pressure acts, again, you might have learned at some point in school, pressure acts orthogonal to this body surface at every point. So the pressure, well, it's because of a small element ds, the pressure forces v times p is a pressure at that particular point, and that negative unit vector at that particular point. Negative because it's acting inwards. Negative n cap d. So this is a pressure force. So the integrated pressure force Fp is integrated over the surface negative p n cap d. This is a pressure force acting on this surface. So now we'll look at the viscous stress force. <laughs>
thing which which viscous stresses you look at the diagram to help us visualize this Stress is a tensor. Tensor. <coughs> Think of um, so. This is we are imagining a fluid parcel to be in an idealized shape as in this in this form. So if you consider that the stress tensor. So this is how the stress tensor looks. Tau stress tensor is written as so. Uh, X Y. Y x y zero tau y zero and tau z x. So this is how the stress tensor look. It's a second order a tensor, and uh, the way we draw this, so we define a plane. So thinking of this particular plane, this plane is cutting the x axis. So the unit normal to this plane is x cap. So the stress tensor <coughs> will be tangential on this plane. So this is tau. The first index here denotes the plane it's acting on. So this is x plane. So it's tau x, and it's going in the y direction. So it'll be tau x y. So this is tau x y. And now we'll have a component in this direction. So this is tau. It's again the x plane, but acting in the z direction. So this is tau x x z. This particular plane, this is the y plane. So here I have tau y acting in x direction. So this is tau y x. And then I go in this direction because it's acting in the z direction. Tau y z. And then on this plane, this is a z plane. <coughs> so I'll have tau z y. And then this direction I have tau. X. So this is a stress tensor, and these guys act tangential on this plane. So the entire surface force, all the surface force acting on the fluid parcel, we divide into pressure and uh, the stress tensor. This is to precise, we call this shear stress tensor because it's acting tangential. So the normal surface force is the pressure force, in the negative, and the tangential ones are the shear stress tensor. So now, if you think about the force, the force on this x plane. So let's let's call the force on this x plane. We'll denote it by F x. So F x is the force acting on this plane. This is tau x y times unit back to the y direction. Tau x y is a component acting in the y direction. So tau x y times t y. Yeah, plus I have tau xc acting in the z direction. So tau xc, this is the force. So this is this. These are the stress component acting on this particular plane. So to get the force, I should multiply stress times area. So this times yes, whatever is the area of this thing, this plane, that will be the force acting on on this plane, x plane, in the uh, due to the stress. Okay. So now Fy force acting on the y plane, uh, which is in this direction. So I can get it as tau y x dx tau y z. And the force acting on the z plane, Fz is. So you can by looking at the way this, these are arranged, you can like this tau zx dx plus tau y y times so these are the forces acting on the x y and the z plates okay so then so all this while we mean this is this is actually momentum balance we compute the rate of change of momentum and uh, we apply the lunch practical theorem in the same way you can apply Angular momentum conservation. So this, this is momentum conservation, linear momentum conservation. We can similarly apply what is called angular momentum conservation.
Does anyone know Miraculous Moment Translation Room? You've learned in school sometime back, right? So, what does it say, Angle Moment Translation? Yeah, but this is like linear moment of conservation. This Newton's so law it says rate of change of linear moment of his force. Like similarly, angular moment of conservation says what? Rate of yes, so rate of change of angular moment of should equal external torque. That's angular moment of conservation. So what do you do is you can take fluid parcels and apply angular moment of conservation. So what do you do is you take your torque is R cross the force. So you apply this for this entire fluid parcel. If you go through the same machinery and apply angular moment of conservation, you'll find that the stress tensor is symmetric. So that's the main result of angular moment of conservation. So you end up saying tau y j equals, this is the result that we get by applying Reynolds transfer theorem to uh, angular moment. So from here, this, this matrix that we have here is symmetric. So tau x y equals tau y x, tau y z equals y and so on. We have the symmetry of the stress tensor. So now this stress tensor, if we have a plane, so we have a plane uh, whose normal is n, n cap is the normal. <coughs> the force, so we wrote down the expression for force on x, y, and c planes. In the same way, the force acting on n plane, plane whose normal is n, and y, the dot product of tau with So these are these are all special cases of this. So if I set, if I take this tau, so if I take this and dot with this ex, so let's look at this tau dot ex is that matrix multiplying one zero zero. Right? So that would give me tau yx, tau zx, right? So tau yx tau zx and so this is what I would get. That's what we have here. Because it's symmetric, this is the same as tau xy. You know, tau xy, tau x. This is what I have there, right? So if you take the dot product of this stress tensor with the unit normal of a plane, you would get the pose acting on that plane. Uh, uh, the expression we need because now, so Fn is really, I have to integrate this with Ps yes, on the surface. If you know the stress tensor, you take the top product with normal and integrate it on the surface at using the, uh, the shear stress acting on that plane. So now I can put this in the force expression. So in the force is integral, I have this. But I can use again Gauss's divergence theorem and convert this into the volume integral. So this becomes integrate over the volume of the fluid parcel. Divergence of tau. Divergence of tau. Now this um, this is now volume integral. Divergence of tau. Tau is a second order stress, stress tensor. So it's tau i j. Partial x j. So now we have all the all the components required to put together this equation. So we wrote this equation there on that board. I have volume integral rho times partial v. Plus P of grad equals the right hand side I have. So I had a pressure term here, negative P n cap ds. This also I can convert it as a volume integral. So this becomes negative grad, grad P. This is what I would get if you convert it to volume integral. So the negative grad P. So negative gradient P plus this component, divergence of tau. 
So this is the pressure force. That's tensor force. And then I have the gravitational part. So I have negative rho g d hat. All of these times. So that's the equation. And now I can pull it all this to the inside here. I can write a single volume integral. And again, because this volume is arbitrary, I can drop the integral and I have a pretty. So I have uh, density times the linear partial. Plus grand P minus volumes of tau. G C hat. So that's my equation. And now I need to do a little more work to find an expression for this in terms of velocity, the stress tensor. So uh, somehow we have to lay tau to the velocity. And this connection, this is called um, the Q2. Relationship. Okay, so, so again in school you might have learned of Hooke's law. Like Hooke's law, uh, Hooke's law relates stress and strain. Stress is proportional to strain, like you would have learned with the X modulus. So similarly, we have somehow relate the stress to uh, velocity field and strain rate. That's called a constitutive relationship. And uh, let's that here. Suppose you have a fluid parcel. So let's take a very simple 2D element. So this is uh, a fluid element which is initially rectangular. You apply S plus tau and it changes, changes into this, changes into different shapes. And this angle we call this delta theta. This is a small angle that it, it's being sheared. Okay. So now this stress. The higher the stress you apply, the greater would be the rate of change of this angle. So, right, the stress tau is proportional to rate of change of this angle, delta theta by delta. Rate of change of this angle. So now, when we look at this angle, suppose the velocity here. So this is velocity in this particular direction x if it's u. So use the velocity in this direction. Uh, this height, let's assume it's delta y. So the velocity at this point would be u plus partial u by partial <laughs> y times delta y. So velocity here is u because this is delta y. I'm saying the velocity here would be u plus partial u by partial y times delta y. So now as this fluid parcel moves, this point has moved here. So the difference in speed between this point and this point is partially with partial y times delta y. So this is this point has an extra speed than this point, and that's given by this, this value. Partial u by partial y times delta y. This is the relative in speed here compared to this point. So if this is now a speed, right? So if I multiply this with delta t, what do you think this is? This will give me this particular distance, the distance at this point is moving. So now again, these are all infinitesimal. So you can think of this as an arc length. In the limit, this is same as an arc length. And so if I want this angle, you remember that angle is r by this radius, right? So, so if I divide this length, divide by delta y, so that's like the radius here. This is this angle. Delta theta. Cancel delta y, and I can print delta theta here, delta t here. So that gives me delta theta by delta t goes to partially by partial y. 
So from there, so I basically showed that tau, the stress is proportional to partial u by partial y. So this is called um, strain rate. So this is the difference between fluids and solids. So in solid mechanics, you learn that the stress is proportional to strain. In fluids, stress is proportional to the strain rate because this is velocity. So this is for a simple element of this form. Now, if you consider, you, have, you consider a fluid parcel like this, and after definition, so it goes to a shape like this. So here, I consider only a deformation in one direction. But if you consider both directions, so let's say this is y and this is x. So now I have to keep track of both two angles, delta theta one, and delta theta two. So I got delta theta one, this angle, delta theta one is proportional to partial u by partial y. So it's an estimate of how the x velocity, velocity in this direction, increases along y. Now to move this guy up, you can do the same calculation, you find that it's the y velocity changing along x. So you can show a similar calculation, delta theta two, this angle, divided by delta t this goes to partial v by the vertical velocity changing with respect to x. So now the total angle is the sum of these two. So as this element gets stressed delta theta by delta t, if I go back, I should call this delta theta 1 because all of this was for this angle. So delta theta, which is the sum of delta theta 1 plus delta theta 2, this goes to partial u by partial y plus partial v by partial x. So, okay, tau is proportional to delta theta by delta t. And so tau is proportional to partial u by partial y plus partial v by partial x. So, stress acting on this particular fluid element. I'm trying to simplify this term, that's a goal. So here, this I can generalize and write tau ij stress tensor. So tau ij is proportional to partial i by partial xj. j by partial xr. So in the special case, when I put x, i, x, and j, y, I'll get this one. So the same way to be derived is you can derive it for all the components. So that's what we get here. So this is the proportionality relation and I can put it equal with a constant. This constant mu, this is called the coefficient of viscosity. We have this, now all I need to do is substitute this in here because of divergence of tau. So I will have an explanation connecting stress and strain rate. So fluids that obey this law are called Newtonian fluids. So water, air, all of these things, Newtonian fluids, where the stress is proportional, it's a linear relationship connecting stress and strain rate. So if you have stress power alpha, some other powers, uh, it becomes non-Newtonian. So cornstarch, jelly, these are examples of non-Newtonian fluids. Whereas air, water, all Newtonian fluids. So now we're going to substitute this in here. So we have a partial next year tau ij. That's a divergence of stress tensor. This is partial by partial exchange of. So tau ij we just derived, it's mu times pi by partial exchange. Partial dJy by partial x. So now we'll operate this inside. Uh, partial xj twice here. And then I have partial xj operating on vj. This again by continuity. So when I take this term inside, I, I get this term, partial xi of 
J by partial X. This is divergence of equilibrium. And by the mass conservation, this is zero. So that takes off this term. So we're left with mu mu times partial square V i y partial x j partial x j. This is the Laplacian. So this is mu. That this comes from the viscous stress terms. Substituting all of this in the in the equation, so I have density times partial v by partial v. So this is forty four terms. So negative rho g plus divergence of stress tensor so that becomes. Mu Laplacian. So that's the equation. And now I'm going to divide throughout by density. And we're assuming an incompressible fluid with density doesn't change. So let's assume density is constant. So if density is if density is changing very little, we can assume it's a constant. So if you assume it's a constant, I can get that inside this and inside the gradient. So pressure divided by rho. This rho drops. And I have mu by rho. Now mu by rho is denoted by nu. This is called the kinematic viscosity. So I get that. So this term becomes nu. And now I can do one more thing. So uh, this g term, so if you look at this particular term, uh, the gravitational force, I can write it as this term, I can write it as gradient of G Z. So I take the gradient of this guy, X and this is Z coordinate. So I take the gradient of this term, X and Y derivatives drop. When I take the Z derivative, I'll get the unit vector along Z direction. So this particular term is gradient of negative G Z. So I can combine this gradient and this gradient. So when I combine these two, I can write it as negative gradient of phi rho. That's a term plus G Z. So this together, I can redefine pressure and I can call this this whole thing. So I can set this to another P. So the when I do that, the final equation I have is this. Also remember, I have this partial time derivative d by dt plus b dot dn. This is what I call substantial derivative d by dt. So I can write the equation as of d by dt equals negative gradient p. So this p now contains all of this negative gradient p plus new partial this, this equation along with the mass conservation will be zero so this is the deviation of this equation the questions okay just one more thing before we end. Uh, now, because of this property, I can take the dot product of this whole equation. This is a vector equation, so an equation for uh, u, v, and w, all three component velocity. I can take a dot product of this whole equation with divergence. So if I take divergence of the whole equation, what happens? The first term in this uh, first term was partial v by partial. So if I take the divergence, I can take the divergence inside. This time will be two. 
divergence will be zero. So the first term drops. The second term is e of grand p. So when you operate divergence on this, it's a non-zero quantity. You get something. So it's divergence of this. On the right hand side, I have negative grand p. So when you operate divergence, this becomes Laplacian of pressure. Now when you operate divergence here, uh, divergence, I can pass it through the Laplacian. So it becomes divergence of V, that's again zero. So when I take divergence throughout, I get divergence of dot V. That's the only term that survives from this, from the left hand side. This equals negative plasma P. Here, that's the only term that survives the right hand side. So from here, P, so pressure P is negative, the class inverse. Of this term, divergence of so pressure ends up being a uh, result of this non-local integration. Because of that, um, this equation. Uh, so you know, people are familiar with Hypole equations, but it's actually not familiar with Hypole equations, right? It's all the method of characteristic. There is a sense information propagates in. in particular directions along characteristics. Whereas here, um, as you can see, the pressure at a particular point, so this is P at X T, pressure at a particular point is connected to all the other points because of this global operator. And this is the pressure that comes in. So people, so that's that's an important point about pressure. It, um, in an incompressible fluid, so it's a common usage that in an incompressible fluid, information propagates at infinite speed. And this is the reason. So we have a, if we have a disturbance, if we introduce a disturbance at a particular point in a fluid in terms of velocity, uh, that gets immediately everywhere in the fluid by a pressure. So that's one interesting aspect. The second interesting point to note when people solve the equation for this form, you can see that uh, you can write pressure in terms of velocity. So if I wanted, I could write this, I, I can further go and take the gradient of this, and I can put that here which will make it a messy expression, but I can write the expression, so I can remove this, and I can have this expression here, so I have a single equation for velocity, it will be an integral differential equation, where derivatives and, and this, this I can write in terms of the Gray's function. So that's, uh, we're gonna stop now, or should we have a few more minutes? Okay, so then I'll stop there, there we have questions. Oh, we thank Jeff for a wonderful talk. Okay.